everyone, Eric Hill, it's been 412, back with our November one of the month. As you remember last month, I told you I was going to come back pretty quick in November with more of a winery of the month, uh, a winery that I found that uh, is not distributed here in Pennsylvania, but will ship to you, that has really blown me away, and I cannot wait to share these wines with you. Uh, it's a very small production place, only about 1,500 cases a year. Uh, again, you have to get on their list, and then two times a year, you'll be able to order if you want. Um, let's jump right into it. The winery is called Alcom, which is Spanish for hawk. Um, and these wines are grown on an estate property that is 2,500 feet above sea level, one of the highest planted vineyards in all of California. It's in the Mendocino Appalachian of the Yorkville Highlands. So if you're in kind of St. Helena on the northern part of Napa, you got about another hour and a half drive to get up into Mendocino and get to this, this property. It's overlooking the Anderson Valley, which is prime time Pinot Noir country, and winemakers from all over California are sourcing fruit from Anderson Valley to make some of the best Pinot Noirs coming out of the state right now, including Paul and Jackie Gordon, who founded Alcon. But what really has turned them on and really kind of turned me on to their wines is not necessarily their Pinot, but the Rhone varietals that they're planting up on this high elevation site in, uh, in Mendocino. So Paul Gordon was gracious enough to give me about 40 minutes of his time a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to pick his brain about this place. Uh, when I had this Petit Sera, I had to order every wine he was making, and, and they've equally blown me away and knocked my socks off. So I'm really excited to share these wines with you today. Uh, Paul's a really down-to-earth guy, uh, Englishman, came to the States in the 80s, uh, made his way through Colorado, ultimately ended up in the Silicon Valley, uh, where he still has a day job, in fact, in the tech industry. Uh, but he got fascinated with the world of wine, like we all do, and wanted to start making some of his own, and, uh, and, and, and started doing just that. And one of the cool things that, that, uh, that I picked up from Paul in our conversation is that kind of pay it forward, very collaborative winemaking um, culture that was very prevalent in Napa Valley in the heyday when Robert Mondavi was trying to get Napa put on the map. That kind of, you know, if one of us succeeds, we all succeed mantra is still very well alive in California. And Paul was very quick to point out the incredible gracious help that he's received from the likes of Dr. Carol Meredith and Steve Legier at Legier Meredith from Mike Officer at Carlisle, from Justin Smith at Saxum, Scott Shapley, who was making wines with Paul, uh, now is making wines down at Roar and Santa Lucia Highlands. So very much that culture is alive and well, and really, uh, really we're able to answer any questions Paul had as he got started. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, thing to hear. Now I asked Paul, this is primetime peanut country, what drew you to this site? Four miles off the beaten path, up a dirt road, at the top of a mountain, you know, cool, cool climate, and, and what really came out is Paul has kind of a, uh, you know, an affinity for these Northern Rhone Syrahs, specifically uh, Syrahs that are coming from the Cote Rotier. area. We talked a little bit about Syrah in my last video in October, and we talked a little bit about Cote Roti as one of those Northern uh, Rhone towns. What Paul found here in this site, there's a couple things. Number one, he was friends with Wells Guthrie, who is the winemaker at Copan in this part of the world, and Pax Mall, who is the winemaker at Pax Wines, he also found out was looking at this property, so he knew his intuition was right. He was onto something special in this site. And instead of going Pinot Noir, he went and bought this property, went a little higher risk, higher reward, if you will. And I gotta tell you, it's really paying off for him. It's, it's incredible. Uh, in 2005, he planted about 15 acres. Most of it is Syrah. He's got about two acres of Grenache, an acre of Morvedra, um, and then a little bit of Viognier that he can co-ferment in with the Syrah. That's what they do in Cote Roti. Uh, by law, you can have up to 20% of Viognier, which is a very aromatic white wine grape, in with your Syrah. Paul only has enough to do about 3 or 4%, which is pretty consistent with what most Cote Roti producers do. But it, it yields these really kind of complex aromatics and these, these very unique wines that you don't get in other parts of the world with the Syrah grape. Um, so... You know, the other thing that, that Paul noticed here is that the, the temperature and the weather patterns and the soil itself were the most like coat roti he could find. So it's got this really poor schist-based soil, uh, very well-drained, really porous, doesn't retain a lot of water. So the vines have to dig really deep to get any nutrients, and they produce a very small yield of very concentrated and densely, concent you know, densely concentrated grapes to make the wines. Um, in fact, Jeb Dunnick, who is a, a famous wine critic that used to write for Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, now is on his own, has called this the Cote Blonde of California. Now, in Cote Roti, there are two famous hillsides. One is Cote Blonde and one is Cote Brune. So when a critic like Jeb Dunnick says, this is the Cote Blonde of California, you start to pay attention and you get your hands on some of these wines. And, and they've really just, just knocked my socks off. Uh, Paul also has these planted fairly densely, 2,200 vines per acre, I believe. Um, so they're struggling. They're fighting with each other for nutrients. They're digging deep into the soil. They're going to pull that minerality out of that, those rocky schist soils. And they're going to produce really, really concentrated fruit. 
So the wine I'm gonna focus on is not the Syrah that's planted on the property, but a petite Syrah that Paul's making. This was the first wine I had from Alcone that just absolutely knocked my socks off. It's such a unique take on petite Syrah. It's grown at a vineyard about four miles away from Paul's place uh, called the Theopolis Vineyard. Again, a little bit warmer than Alcone, but not much, just on the brink of where a grape like Petite Syrah is gonna get ripe. Um, so what is Petite Syrah, you ask? So it's a cross, it's a cross of two different grapes. One is Syrah, which you know we, we obviously know and love from the Northern Rhone, and the other is a very rare, uh, obscure grape called Pelorsen that was grown in the Savoie region uh, by the French Alps in southeastern France. Now these grapes didn't cross in the field like some other famous uh, grape variety crossings like uh, Gouet Blanc and Pinot Noir crossed to make Chardonnay. That happened naturally. This was actually an experiment by a French botanist by the name of Francois de Rief, who in the 1860s was working at the University of Montpellier and made this grape by crossing Pelorsen and Syrah. Okay, uh, in the 1880s it made its way to America. It was renamed to Petite Syrah in America and it has taken off. It is, it is a very widely planted grape throughout California, specifically in Sonoma County. Uh, and then as you get up into this part of the world, Paul is playing around with it up here as well with the Theopolis Vineyard. Um, but it's known for being a very dark, uh, grape, uh, tremendous uh, color on these wines, uh, very high levels of tannin, that kind of drying sensation you get when you drink a wine. I always compare it to people if you kind of leave a tea bag in a, in, a, in, a, in a cup of tea for too long and that really drying astringent sensation, that's tannin. Petit Syrah is known to be a very highly tannic grape. Uh, it produces very dark fruit flavors of plum, spiced plum, uh, you know, blackberry, um, you know, leather, dark chocolate, very dark fruit driven flavors. Uh, so you typically want to let these things decant for an hour or two to really let them open up a little bit. Um, they're fantastic wines. Um, so I'm drinking this one right out of the gate. I got to tell you, it's, it's just fantastic. This is the fourth vintage that Paul has made off of this vineyard. Um, and just like Halcon, it's producing very small clusters of very concentrated fruit. Uh, Paul said he went full on Rhone style in this wine, meaning he aged it all in neutral large French oak, uh, oak punchins. So not a lot of uh, oak dominating this, uh, this wine. It's very natural in terms of its expression of fruit and expression of place and ferment it with 50% whole cluster. So whole cluster is when you take the entire grape uh, cluster, stem and all, and you put that in and you let that ferment. You don't just you know, pull the stems off and just ferment the grapes. Um, he was doing about 30%, he's up to 50, and he's kind of found that to be the sweet spot for this wine. So I asked him, you know, it didn't kind of make a lot of sense to me. You've got what's known to be a very highly tannic grape in Petit Syrah. Why go more whole cluster? What does that do for you? Um, Paul said a couple things. Number one, he finds that you get a little more of that violet, a little more of that floral aromatic out of the wine. And for some reason, what I like about Paul is he didn't try to, you know, you know, blow smoke up my, my rear with a bunch of chemistry. He said, look, I don't really understand the chemistry of this stuff, but I will tell you that they are complementary. The, the, the tannins that I get out of the stems and the tannins that come off the fruit on the skins and the seeds they just work together. They kind of tame each other out. They're very complementary for some reason. So what you get is not an overly tannic grape or end product. You get something that has kind of um, kind of mellowed itself out by the, the interaction of those two uh, during the fermentation process. So I thought, found that to be a very interesting story. So very small production of this wine, only about 170 cases made. Uh, let's take a look at the color here. Um, it is not, it's not dark black or, or, or inky purple by any means. It's definitely red dominant. Um, very dark and deep ruby red though, just a little bit of garnet on the edges, but very, very dark red. But what really blows me away about this wine is the nose. It's unlike any Petit Syrah I've ever, I've ever had. I mean, just jumping out of the glass is uh, fresh cracked peppercorns. It is, it, 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 listen, if I, if I smelled this wine, I would say Northern Rhone, without a doubt. I cannot even believe that this is Petit Syrah. When I get in and taste it, I get some more of those characteristic flavors, but the nose is black pepper, it's rosemary and sage, very herbal, and you definitely get that violet, that floral characteristic, for sure. The fruit is under there, but you're, it, you know, it's, it's more earth dominant. The fruit that you get, though, is, is that spiced plum that, you know, I don't know if I'd say blackberry on this. Almost a little black currant, like a, a Cabernet smell, but it's, it, it's, you know, not quite that, but I definitely pick up the plum. Um, a little bit of a little bit of leather, um, kind of like your baseball glove when you're chewing your mitt out in, in the outfield, you know, that, that kind of leather smell. Let's give it a whirl. Wow. This wine, um, <laughs> I'm almost speechless when I drink this. It's, um, 
guys, this is about thirty dollars a bottle. I'm just gonna put it out there. I would pay seventy five dollars for a bottle like this if I was if I was drinking this um, from Northern Run or something like that. Um, fairly full bodied. I mean, there is a minerality to this that I have not had in a California wine or, or many California wines. Imagine licking a piece of slate um, or wet rock. It's it's kind of got that chalky minerality to it. Um, the fruit is, is, is very present, but again, there's, there's all these characteristics of, of minerality and earth and, and, and that pepper and that savoriness just is right there. Uh, and the finish is amazing. I mean, I can still taste every component of this wine as it, as it continues to kind of glide along. Um, just just fan, fantastic. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so listen, these guys are making some fantastic wines. This is the Petit Syrah. They're also making a Grenache called Esquisito uh, that's kind of a Chateauneuf de Pop style blend with Grenache, Mouvedre, and Syrah. Uh, they're making a, a Syrah off the property that I mentioned, co-fermented with the Vignet, co roti style, that I, I literally can't speak highly enough of. It is absolutely fantastic. And then this Petit Syrah, again, blew me away and continues to do so. This is the first I've had of the 16 which I know Paul still has some available of. And then the Pinot Noir he's producing is some of the best sites in Anderson Valley he's sourcing fruit from. So Cerise Vineyard and uh, Bear Wallow and Oppenland are some of the best sites in Anderson Valley. Uh, so the Pinots that I've gotten from, from Alcon are also fantastic. So I can't encourage you enough, go to www.alconvineyards.com, get on the list. The great thing about this list is you don't have to buy. You're gonna get offered twice a year. You can buy as much or as, as, as little as you want or, or just skip. An entire allocation, okay? Um, seven and a half percent discount on a on a, on a, on a six pack, fifteen percent discount on a case of twelve. Basically, it covers your shipping. Again, you're getting wines like this for about thirty dollars, um, so you just really can't beat it. Really excited to get people turned on to these wines, um, and we'll just leave it at that. So, like we always say at Ben Four One Two, the world of wine is a enormous place. Here's to always expanding your palate, drinking new varietals, and in this case, finding a, a brand new winery that we can uh, we can explore together. Cheers.